this is the one I finally got that I was looking for. It's always been rattle trap. That's part of the allure though. Yeah. Welcome back to Goldberg's Garage. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you understand that this 69 Hemi four-speed charger is my favorite. We already did a special on it, so what do you do? You invite your neighbor over who just so happens to own a 1969 440 charger. May I introduce to you my neighbor, Mr. Martin Peake. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. Thanks for having me. You kidding me? Thanks for coming <laughs> over, man. Uh, you, it's a, it's a long story uh, about the relationship between Martin and myself. Martin is, as I said, a neighbor. Uh, now he's a double neighbor because he owns a house on that side of me and that side of me. You just didn't have enough space for all your cars or what? You had to build a bigger car <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Um, the reality is Martin's been a car guy uh, for, I don't know, since you were 14, 14 years, years old, old, you told me. Yeah. You own a dealership and you don't own just those types of cars. You have an eclectic collection. Tell everybody what, you know, kind of the, the range of vehicles that you have in here. I, um, I have a 57 Volkswagen Bug uh, all the way up to the 2024 C8 Z06. Nice. <laughs> and everything in between. Um, Mopar has been one of my favorites all, all the way along the way. When I was 14 years old, I uh, would used to go to a used car lot and climb in the charger just like this one. And I would sit there on the used car lot and make motor sounds thinking <laughs> that I was driving it. Well, the used car lot manager would come out, introduce himself to me. And after about 25 times doing that, he got used to me and allowed me to do it. But I never started the car. But my dream was to own one. And this is my third one, but this is my final one. This is the one I finally got that I was looking for. Why the 69 as opposed to the 68? Just when I was 14, that was the car on the lot. <laughs> that was my first jewel. <laughs> well, I like the 69 um, more than the 68 because of the aesthetics. Um, the rear end of the car, the front end of the car, you know, the, the headlights. As I'm looking at your car, it does nothing but bring a smile to my face. And the reason why initially is because of the hubcaps. <laughs> and that's an original piece of equipment on this car. Uh, we don't know specifically if the louvers are original, but we're gonna look on that build sheet and see if we can figure it out. But tell us where you found this car. Tell us the story about it. And the gentleman that owned it had passed away and the neighbor was helping the wife sell the car. Mm -hmm. And it was in Iowa. Um, and after talking to this gentleman, it came to my attention that it was a survivor car. And so I started quizzing him, well, how do you, how do you assure, how can you assure that to me? Well, there's some documentation that I can show you and share with you that are amazing. And how many miles does it have on an original? 64,000. 64,000. It's an automatic. And tell us the story about the air conditioner. At two years after the gentleman owned it, he took it back to the Chrysler store and had it installed. So it, the air conditioning that's in it wasn't original, mm -hmm. but he had it put in at the store. And so everything's that old. And it's since 1971, it's been in there and still blows cold today. And you've got all that <laughs> documentation yes. that notes that. You always wonder if the original vehicle is altered in any way, shape or form, if it's gonna take away from its value. But if it's done in house right. and you have all the documentation, it can do nothing but enhance the value. What was your first car that you purchased? As a collector car? Uh, nope, as a kid. A 63 GMC pickup, three quarter ton. Really? <laughs> Have V6. you ever had a desire to get another one of those? I bought a 64 last year, two years ago and restored it. Uh -huh. 
And so that's, that was as close as I've been able to get back to it. That's why I started collecting these cars, because they bring you back to yesteryear. Um, you're not much older than me, and uh, you experienced pretty much the same thing I did. And these days, you know, in 2024, to be able to step in a 69 Charger and have it, number one, start up, and have it, number two, be able to drive down the road without overheating, uh, having the brakes work, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of unusual. So what are your plans with this car? To keep it forever. That's one of the ones I will keep forever. Really? Yeah, I really? really think that because of the Survivor, and I'm a Survivor collector, I really yeah. enjoy cars that, that weren't untouched. How long have you, had you been looking for the car? Probably 25 years. Really? For that car, yeah. the car. Yeah. Is it something you do weekly? Daily. You literally Every look morning for this? Every morning when I get out of bed really? at 4.30, I'm on the internet. <laughs> Damn. That's strong. You got to respect that, ladies and gentlemen. And it's F8 green, which I absolutely love. Wow. This thing is a time capsule. Absolutely beautiful. 69,000 miles. Amazing. Starts and runs just perfectly. Oh, you got the green interior, interior too. Interior, yeah. Wow. This thing's beautiful. The headliner's in good shape. You just don't see all that. No, you don't. Nor do you see the uh, seat belts, seat the belts up here. And the, <laughs> another cool thing about these cars, and I'm sure you knew it. The date. The, yeah. They're date-coded belts. They're just awesome. I know the viewers uh, want to hear the roar of the 440 over my mouth. So, let's go for a drive. Before we take off, <laughs> I'd like to show you a little bit about the car that I think is one of the main collector parts of the vehicle and the energy that this gentleman that owned it put forth. Yeah, I mean, uh, you wish that every car that you own was previously owned by a guy like this. Exactly. Um, show me what you got. Well, we'll start, let's start with this little book. <laughs> In this book, it shows the gentleman where he purchased it, when, <laughs> the car had eight miles on it, March 29th, 1969. Good God. As the ownership continued, he started documenting each oil change. Here's oh, the first one. He bought it in March, May is the first one. And as it gets to the back of the book, he started putting, every time he put fuel in the car, <laughs> Every, every time he d documented it, each time, what the mileage was, the date, and how much he spent, and how many gallons went in the car. It's whole life, you can just keep going through it. So quite obviously, <laughs> there wasn't much work done on this car, because if there was, it you'd was. have encyclopedias of it exactly. in here. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> just keeps going. 69,000 miles yeah. of documented fuel input. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. Good God Almighty. No tunings on this side. No eight That's, track. Yeah. Yeah. No, no cassette. Nothing. <laughs> that is absolutely gorgeous. Well, let's take this bad boy out for a ride. All right. This is the second Charger I've ever been a passenger in. <laughs> Are you going to drive? No. I'm just saying, it's a wonderful seat. I mean, it's just it's awesome. This one I got to reach up because I'm way down. Because <laughs> you're so fat, Mark. Yeah, that's a nice big head. <laughs> what a beauty. This, is, this thing is beautiful. Good for you, Mark. Good for you. I just can't believe the care he took for it. Of it. <laughs> Are you a B-body guy or an E-body guy? Which do you like better? I'm a B-body guy. Yeah. It's funny because you're, you're either one or the other. And I'm not a B-body guy. I like the look, but I don't like the oh, fact yeah. that you close the door and it still closes, you know, like 10 minutes later. <laughs> Reverse.
reverberates. I mean, they've always been rattle traps, you know, they really... Yeah. <laughs> no question. That's part of the allure, though. Yeah. This has got to be one of the prettiest little drives. Yeah. It's nice to cut it. When you we can see that far ahead, you can kind of cut the apex all the way. Oh, I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it would be uh, a sin not to take my 69 Charger out while my neighbor has his 69 Charger at Goldberg's Garage. So we figured we uh, take these two 69s out for a little drive and maybe burn a little rubber. I don't have seat belts. I don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Freaking awesome looking at this 69 Charger in front of my 69 Charger. Well, that does it for another episode of Goldberg's Garage. Thank you very much for tuning in for not one 69 Charger, but two, as this strategically stalls. Remember, make sure you like and comment, and most importantly, subscribe to Goldberg's Garage. Until next time. We'll see you later.